am Emily Watkins uh, with Rochester Women Magazine. Um, and Zoe, as you can see, is not here today. She is in Paris. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm totally jealous of her. Um, so we'll start with introductions. And so let's hear your name, your business title, and a tagline if you have one. Um, and this is just a really brief opportunity. Um, and we'll get to hear more from everybody as we go through the meeting. So um, let's see, I see Hope Summit, but I'm pretty sure that's not your name. Although it would be a pretty name. <laughs> I like that name. I'm Donna Leffler and I'm Zooming from home. And I always, our, our Bible study has been Zoom meetings for the past couple of years. So I'm usually on Wednesday nights on my home computer uh, using Hope Summit Zoom. But this morning, I'm so tired of being late every month to these that I decided to stay home and be on time. And did you notice I was the first one this morning? Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna put myself back on mute. Do you wanna say what your business is? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. And you know what else? I forget to take my business cards lots of times to chamber events. Um, I'm Donna Leffler with Edward Jones. And what I do is just put a dollar sign on people's dreams. So um, I'd love to get to know people and find out what they want to do in life and then figure out how to get there. So and th great. thanks for doing this, Emily. Yeah, thank you. Brianna McDonald. I'm just going as I see you, so it might sound kind of random. <laughs> It looks like you're still muted. <laughs> of course, there's like all the pressure, like quick, unmute. <laughs> Do you want me to come back to you? Okay, Paulette, let's go to you and then we'll come back to Brianna. Sure thing, good morning. I'm Paulette Teigen and I'm here representing SCORE. SCORE is a volunteer-based mentoring program and educational um, platform for business owners, um, people that are considering going into business um, or that have been experienced in business. And then I also have my own business um, called Premium Support, which I do bookkeeping for small businesses. And um, I'm really working on a tagline, but right now my tagline is, we want to be the best vendor our customers ever have, which means that we like to go up and beyond. But that's, I need help <laughs> getting it defined so it doesn't sound so blah. <laughs> All right. Well, this might be a, not right now, but today's meeting might be perfect for you. I think, it might I think be. There, there's going to be something that can help you out here. <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Paulette. Okay, Brianna, I saw it toggle. Yes. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, I am Brianna McDonald. I'm with Avra Hospitality. Uh, senior catering manager. Uh, so obviously lots and lots of changes in the past eight months with events and we've pivoted, I don't know how many times from hybrid to virtual to virtual holiday parties in our ballroom. And, um, so lots of fun stuff. So I am proud of my team. We didn't just kind of sit back and we're like, oh, no events. It's how can we create events still? That is awesome. So we'll be yeah. digging more into that as we get into our small group. So thank you so much. I'm excited to meet you. Okay, so the next person across is Beth. Good morning, everybody. So I'm Beth Yoakum and I am with Thrive. And my tagline is, if you are in need of figuring out ways to make your business run more efficiently or more effectively, I've got the software that can help you across the board. All right, thank you. Heidi Stinson. Greetings, this is my first uh, Rochester Chamber meeting. So uh, <laughs> thank you for allowing me to be present and part of this meeting. I'm located in Minneapolis. I'm active in the Edina uh, Chamber of Commerce. I sit on the board of directors 
And my brother owns Stinson Services. We're a general contractor based out of Edina. We specialize in roof replacement, uh, hail damage specifically. And what has changed for us has been we had to develop a safe process for getting in and out of people's homes uh, during COVID. And uh, luckily, we work on the roof. So <laughs> primarily, we're on the exterior, which has been good. Uh, but just seeing the team kind of come together and work in a different way has been something that really is cause for celebration right now. We have been able to communicate, uh, not in the office, and still be able to construct projects and end up with happy customers and positive reviews, which is uh, what we aim for. So glad to be part of the chamber, part of this meeting. Uh, excited to learn more. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right, so I think I might have goofed because I gave you guys a sneak peek of our first discussion question, and so you guys are excited to talk about it right away, but um, what I'm supposed to be doing, according to Zoe, is just having you guys introduce each other and give your taglines. So Jennifer's like, um, what are we talking about? <laughs> so we'll just go super quickly through everybody so that we can get to that discussion question in our small groups, okay? Sorry about that, I'm a noob here. All right, so Catherine, you're next. Hi, I'm Catherine McBride. I'm the president of the board of directors of the Neuro Hospitality House, which was in, it is in Rochester, close to uh, between the Mayo Building and St. Mary's. And we provide a very low cost temporary, like hospitality to neurology patients um, for whatever work they're having done here. So um, it's a gift. That's awesome, thank you. Tanya? Good morning, everyone. My name is Tanya Oy. I'm with Rodan and Fields uh, Clinical Dermatology. I'm here to help you with your skincare needs. Uh, we help people with sensitive skin, aging skin, uh, acne, uh, and uh, sun damage. I We are the number one premium skincare brand, and I love helping people. I love fixing figuring out the puzzle of everybody's skin is different and figuring out what works for them. So if you're looking to make an improvement or just looking for a change, I'm here, I'm here for you. Thank you. Thanks, Tanya. All right, Gwen. Sorry, I had to get the end mute. Um, I'm Gwen Stevens. I'm the Director of Cooperative Relations at People's Energy Cooperative located in Orinoco. I live in Rochester though, but um, in Orinoco, we've been longtime chamber members. Um, and this is my first um, women's event with it. So I'm excited. Uh, I was excited to see this. So anyway, but um, we are, we don't really have a tagline, but um, we, for those who don't know, we basically, we are an electric utility basically for the areas around Rochester is probably the simplest way to put it. Um, and I guess one of our taglines that we've used in the past, what has been um, powering people, empowering lives. Um, you know, we deliver electricity, but we do a lot more and we help uh, local businesses in our, in our communities um, through economic development initiatives and stuff. And um, let's see, I think that's it, right? You don't want us to talk about what we're proud of quite yet? <laughs> Not yet. Just hold okay. on. Hold on. <laughs> I know that's like, you want to dive right into that stuff, right? I mean, because we are constantly thinking about this stuff, but all right, Jenny Cannon. Hello. My name is Jenny Cannon. I'm the lead pastor at Christ United Methodist and new to Rochester and to Minnesota and came to this group last month. Um, so just glad to get to know some people in the community. Our church's um, tagline, if you will, um, is grace in the city. So glad to be with you today. Oh, nice. Thanks, Nancy. Sorry, um, I, I was waiting for her to come back and then catch me again at the beginning. Um, I'm Nancy Peterson and um, I'm a 38 year vocational educator, um, a licensed educator, NAMI trained uh, through the Boys and Girls Club in Rochester and four tier teacher and I'm excited to work with the Rochester area Chamber of Commerce reaching out through the state university system uh, for um, Southeast Minnesota, Rochester area and connecting all the chambers um, so that we're um, in sync with each other moving forward for entrepreneurship and the workforce. Awesome, um, thank you. My, oh, my two small businesses, small business, um, uh, small business, big impact, wild to be a teacher um, yes. is Nancy's Home and Garden Extravaganza opening up for independent living. 
um, throughout the community. And, um, uh, and then the other business is uh, Bench, uh, Bench Consulting, LLC, Bench Initiative Communities United, Southeast Minnesota. All right, thanks, Nancy. Amelia. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Amelia McDonald. I'm a music therapist with Healing Rhythms, and we empower lives through music. Awesome, thanks. Denise, hi. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Hi, everyone. Hi, Emily. Great to see you. Great to see everyone this morning. I'm Denise Stiegel. I'm the CEO and curator here at livinghealthylist.com. And what we do here, we're, we're a health and wellness platform where we engage, educate, and empower women to live the life that they were meant to live. Awesome. Thanks, Denise. Shayla. Hi, um, I'm Shayla Neville. I'm a chiropractor. I own Connected Life Chiropractic. So I specialize in pregnancy, pediatric, and full family care. And my goal is to get you connected back to your health and your true self, just so that you can like, when you're feeling your best, you can better connect to like your family and everyone else around you. That's awesome. Thank you, Kristen. Hi, I'm Kristen Mannix. I'm the Advancement Coordinator for the RCTC Foundation. And uh, we are about um, providing opportunities for all to excel. And so um, we support RCTC and its students. Awesome. All right, so Catherine, you are next on my screen, but you've already gone. Paulette, same with you. Jennifer. Good morning, everyone. Sorry for joining a little bit later. I have my seven and 10 year old here that are not quite ready to go for the morning. So there you, you go, that's it. my morning. <laughs> yes. um, I will try to um, keep this brief. I'm actually working on my tagline to make it a little bit more understandable because you know, Iowa does such expansive work. It's really hard to have a tagline that people understand about our work. So I just put in there a new one that I was thinking about and it's helping individuals and families thrive in Olmstead County. So hopefully yes. that's a little bit more understandable and I would love to have feedback on that. Again, I think you'll I think you'll be able to get it today. So thanks. Did I miss anybody? Okay, that's awesome. So we're going to move on to our first group discussion. So now is your chance. So the first question is, how has your business or practice changed in the last eight months? Um, and what are you most proud of? So over the course of 2021, what has changed? And what are you most proud of? So um, Zoe gave an example for us to think about. She said, there were times I did deep reflecting and adjusting, and there were other times that I was just trying to survive and run from one appointment to another. That sounds familiar. It gave me a better understanding of what my ideal balance looks like and my retirement slash exit plan has changed because of this. Oh, thanks, Amelia, for putting the question in the sidebar. That's awesome. Um, okay, so, and then... I would say with the magazine, um, I only started with the, or I bought the business at the beginning of 2020. So I feel like since then it's just been like this crazy, like super steep learning curve with everything and like everything's changing all the time. Um, but we did a rebrand and I was pretty darn proud of that. So that was exciting. So um, Sherry, I don't know how to do this. I think that you do it, split people into groups. Is that right? Um, and then we are, we have until 8.05 to discuss this question, and then we'll come back and give some comments and thoughts after that. Um, oh, there we go. Everybody Thank getting you. their invitations? Mine popped up in a way. Okay. It popped up yeah, and then popped disappeared up really fast and then it went away. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. Got it. All right, we'll see you on the other side. I 
am too. My my kids always tell me, "Mom, you're so loud." I'm like, well, don't mm-hmm. make me be. <laughs> I'm trying to take my emotions out of it, but it's not working this morning. <laughs> it's all right. You're in good company. <laughs> Okay, so the question, um, how has your business practice changed in the last eight months? So that would be, well, beginning of this year. And what are you most proud of? I have kind of a short answer, so I can go first and you guys can uh, dig in a little deeper. So I'm president and CEO of the Neuro Hospitality House, which is a volunteer job. It's not for profit. And I started in January and we um, had uh, just lost our... uh, all of our staff. We had an interim um, executive director who did a great job, but was always going to be interim. And we didn't have any house staff. So it's a four bedroom house on second street, four bedrooms for people to stay in and um, then go to the appointments at the clinic or for the caregivers while their people are having brain surgery. So um, the board came together to actually do the work, scrubbing floors and so forth. And so it was very difficult to get volunteers um, who are on the board to come in and you know shovel the snow and sweep and, and clean. And so over these months, we have recruited and hired an executive director who has hit the ground running fast. And she has then taken over that work, but also has hired a house manager. So it's like we dropped a quarter in and it's all blooming and we're in the middle of our of fundraising campaign now that's going pretty well. Um, so it feels like the whole world has opened up and we have and we have success finally. I can go next. Um, so I'm Tanya Oy with Rodan and Fields uh, Clinical Dermatology. I help people uh, get the best skin of their life and build confidence in their skin. Um, Something that has changed huge for my business, I guess I've always been kind of a digital platform, but through all of this, some of the biggest changes is I've been able to expand uh, the people I've met. Uh, When I first started three years ago, uh, most of my get togethers, events were always in person and I've been able to expand from just in person to so much more virtual and in person. So I'm able to much more easily expand beyond just Rochester. Um, I, I, we're worldwide, uh, we're in four different countries, so I'm pretty much just within the United States. I don't know a lot of people in Japan or any place else, uh, but been able to expand my network so much, and that has been huge. Uh, something that I am very proud of is, is the look on people's faces, the shock almost of how fast they see results in their skin and how proud and excited they are when they see changes in their skin. And um, I'm a teacher by trade. This is something I do on the side and I love helping people. That's really my gig. And the fact that I'm able to help them feel better in their skin is amazing. I'll go. I'm Jennifer Teske. I usually look better than this, but my morning's not going smoothly. So bear with me. Um, So I work for United Way of Olmstead County. I'm the vice president of resource development. And so during COVID, I've been trying to raise lots of money, which is very hard for a nonprofit. So um, especially when other nonprofits depend on you for their budget. So I take it home with me. I have weight on my shoulders like no other. Um, And that's, I do that to myself, right? Um, But if that tells you anything about the passion that I have for the work that I do, you know, that's, that's what I deal with. Um, so um, I think that what I'm proud of most, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that I could tell you because I think United Way does so many things that people don't realize. Um, I guess what I'm most proud of during COVID, we were, we were able to pivot on a dime um because of the staff that we have and the flexibility that we have in our funding streams so we are able to respond to community need as it's happening so um during covid um we were able to raise about eight hundred thousand dollars in about a month's time frame to help over a hundred nonprofits just stay above water um during covid because 
the needs were so exasperate, exasperated, where well, that's a really long word. Um, and so, you know, it just to be able to help so many nonprofits that are helping so many individuals and families survive during COVID, I think is probably my, uh, one of the things that really sticks out to me um, is that we are able to be flexible and nimble. Um, you know, we supported about $75,000 of support to families and kiddos that had no internet access, had no computer devices. And so we were able to help them, um, you know, be able to do distance learning. Um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things. We were able to uh, address eviction prevention at $40,000. We, have, we were able to address um, nonprofits that are led by and serving people of color and those that are disadvantaged. Um, those uh, nonprofits are very disinvested in. Um, they're small nonprofits that are doing great, great work and no one knows. Um, but people of color and those that are disadvantaged were seeing um, bigger hits in COVID than any other population. So, you know, basically, bluntly, no one's paying attention to those people or organizations that are supporting those people. So that's me speaking very bluntly, but that's the work that we focus on is, you know, equity for all. Um, and so I'm very proud of the work that we do and that we were able to help others during a time of crisis. Um, and we're still doing that today because, as you know, COVID is upon us. So. It's not going away, um, and I'm just proud that I can help keep my organization afloat to help others in our community. I'll pop in next. Jennifer, that is just outstanding. It's, it's really great to hear. Thank you for all that you do. Um, I'm Paulette Teigen. I'm with, let's see, my, my uh, announcement up there says I'm with SCORE, so I'll chat about that real quick. Um, I've, I've been a volunteer mentor for three years, and the things that I've enjoyed about, about that is that, um, you know, we're assigned different clients. You never know what uh, position a person is in, um, what business they're thinking of. Um, we do have an intake coordinator that sifts through the, the inquiries and assigns them to the person that he feels is, is the best fit for him. And, you know, when I get a farmer or I get a food truck or, you know, who knows what kind of a business, you know, you're going to get. And I'm always questioning, like, why did I get assigned to this? But it's always very fun. And there's always some value that I can add to um, a person. I didn't realize when I was operating my own business how much um, experience and expertise I really did have until I was able to share it with other people. And really, the key of it is just all the great resources that I know are out there and that SCORE provides and, and I found in other ways. So I really enjoy spending my time. And through all of COVID, it's been just phone or Zoom meetings. And so that's been quite convenient too. Um, the other thing that I do is bookkeeping for small businesses. So it's kind of along the same lines, only we, we focus on the finances and the keeping the books. I don't do taxes, but it's, it's um, keeping the books accurate and up to date so that a business owner can know the health of their business and know what kind of decisions they could be making. Um, we spend a lot of time cheering our clients on, um, giving them always two or three actionable steps of value that, they, that we see that they could implement that could give them this result that they might be looking for. So we spend, a, um, spend time doing that too. Um, most proud of is that we were invited by CETA to create a um, bookkeeping 101 for business start business startups because CETA has programs for um, businesses that are just um, just coming to them initial initially and so we um, provided this 
webinar on how to set up their own books. So they don't have to go to a professional bookkeeper. They can do it themselves. We were very explanatory in layman's terms and, and uh, we've had some very good feedback of it. And took a, took us quite a while. We've only been in business for this year. So um, it was a good project for us. And that's it, thanks. I think I might have uh, might be lucky last. I can't tell if there's anybody else in here. Uh, so um, I, a lot of what Jennifer was talking about um, in terms of the pressure that comes on to um, nonprofits when you have people that you serve is true at the foundation as well. So, um, you know, I want to commend all of the RCTC staff to go through pretty dramatic transformations in terms of how they um, taught and how they provided service during this time. They were incredible with their flexibility. Um, but during the, uh, during the pandemic, we took a survey and found that 53% of our students were either housing insecure or food insecure. And so that really put a lot of pressure onto our organization to try and meet those needs. And um, I am incredibly proud that first and foremost, our staff, um, our faculty stepped up and were incredibly generous to issue what we call YES grants. Uh, if you're a broke student, you hear no a lot. Um, and our YES grants are Yellow Jacket Emergency Support Funds. Um, and so we were able to deliver a lot of emergency grants that helped people stay in their apartments, helped them fix cars, you know, um, pay for textbooks, all those sorts of things. And so um, when I think about uh, uh, what I'm proud of during this time is the absolute um, passion that our uh, employees and staff have for serving our students. And, um, uh, and I'm really proud to be a part of an organization that is is investing in the success of their students. All right, well, Kristen, I'm actually lucky last. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, I am Brianna with Auburn Hospitality. So um, that would be the Doubletree, the Hilton, the Hilton Garden Inn. Um, so I plan the events, room blocks, anything, um, obviously, especially in the beginning with all the restrictions, how many people can you have? Can you have food, indoor, outdoor, six feet distance? Um, so it was definitely a challenge, but instead of just kind of sitting back, we were like, all right, how can we make money? How can we make people feel safe? So we did anything from literally hired a comedian in our ballroom and then live streamed it to a hundred plus people for the city of Rochester for their holiday party. Um, we've also been able to have doctors come in and do kind of procedures or fake procedures, of course, um, and stream it to China. So um, any way that we can kind of touch people, build those relationships, um, that's kind of been our main focus. So creative ways to get money and still staying in contact with those people who aren't booking events, but we know eventually will again. That, that's really incredible. That, that's some amazing creativity. You know, a lot of the fundraising that we drew is event driven and we've sat around the table going, I don't know. So, you know, the things that you came up with are pretty incredible. Yeah, we've gone, <clears throat> a lot of nonprofits uh, have a signature fundraising event and ours, you probably know is Power of the Purse. Uh, we actually decided not to have power of the purse this year because we really needed to focus on uh, what was going to be our best return on investment, and that is individual relationships and corporate relationships outside of an event. So we did that, you know, because we knew that was going to be the best return on investment. Even though we know people love power of the purse, it's not a great investment of our time or our money, um, even though people really love it. Um, we just had to not do it this year because of that need for focus so we could really support our community rather than just having a fun party. So um, I hope people understand that, but I don't think they realize the importance of us not having that event this year. Uh, 
Wow, that was really quick. All right, thanks everybody. So let's we'll just have um, just a little bit of a follow up until about 10 after so super fast. Um, does anybody want to share kind of some things that they heard in their group really briefly? I, I just want to mention that um, even though we didn't talk about it in our group, I connected because I'm with, um, you know, following uh, 125 Alive with the women's magazine, you know, guys, is that um, Emily didn't mention when we were talking about what are we going to be doing this weekend and what exciting things are going on in the community, but a lot of those things um, ahead of time, I know things are moving fast, so things pop up, but are listed in the magazine. If you go to the back or, or the events in the magazine, um, it really supports the community uh, for the whole DMC and, and community, uh, Med City, Rural to the Capital, of telling what's going on. Um, and so um, just keep that in mind that um, she's the leader with the women's magazine going out to Southeast Minnesota. And um, so that, I mean, we talked about the fair at Steele County, whatever. It really stretches the wings to let you know everything that's going on. Thanks for the shout out. That's really awesome. All right. Donna, I see you. you're off mute. Oh, sorry. No, Were I was just going to say something, something from our group. Awesome. Uh, I'm just really proud. There was a lot of nonprofits in our group with the Neuro Hospitality House, the RCT Foundation, um, United Way. Um, just makes you really proud to be part of a community where people are working so hard to better our community. So thank you all for all that you do. Awesome. Lots of great things happening. Jennifer, you have your hand up. So I've learned how to use Zoom very effectively. So that's why I raised my hand. Snaps here. Um, <laughs> So um, basically, um, I think I talked a lot in our group. Um, and I think the one thing that I realized that was an aha for me is that people were understanding, they were appreciative of the work that we do. And at the end of my conversation, I said, you know, we all have nonprofits have signature events. Um, and um, people think that events are just the cat's meow. Um, for, but for a nonprofit, an event is really hard to pull off and the return on investment is not great. Um, so I said to my group, the reason we didn't have Power of the Purse this year is because we really needed to raise money. An event is not the way to raise money, honestly. Um, it's individual relationships uh, as well as corporate relationships. Um, so I was reaffirmed by the people in my group that yes, you don't have to raise an event or you don't have to plan an event. We understand and we're with you. So that's very refreshing for me to, and an aha for me um, to think about for yeah. the future. Thank you. And I want to, I want to just, um, I just want to working with um, uh, education industry and nonprofits, Med City, Rural to the Capital, um, in the whole education uh, factor. I just want to alliterate on what Jennifer just said, is that we can do nonprofits and we can do these events, even though she's speaking of Olmstead, Med, um, Olmstead um, United Way. I work on US of A. Uh, for ARP and generational, I um, so and the Rochester Chamber of Commerce, Rochester Area Chamber of Commerce. I work on the U.S. of A, but we become international now for global systemic sustainability. Is just to realize, even though she mentioned Olmstead um, a United Way, that it reaches out through the whole state, Med City, rural to the capital, and we can do the nonprofits education and economic piece um, uh, throughout the whole U.S. of A. Um, so yeah, thanks. thanks, Nancy. Let's hear just really quickly from the last group, because I think there were only three groups. Does somebody want to be the spokesperson for the last group? Well, I can, but everyone else can join in too. I wanted to kind of emphasize that Amelia said that she needed to pivot. And that's basically what we've been doing the past eight months, all of us. And the way she articulated was really well because she gave us examples of how she had to pivot. I also appreciated what Jenny said about how things like Zoom were really exciting at the in like March of, of 2020. And by, by January of 2021, it was kind of, 
had lost that sort of um, novelty and that that in itself is a challenge or can be a challenge. I mean, we're more familiar with it, but also like it's maybe harder to get people to show up for a Zoom event or something. Right. Yeah, totally. Uh, so quick shout out to Denise and our group who um, is writing, she almost finished with a full book and then is also um, in, she wrote a chapter in that book, which is a bestseller. So she's a bestselling author. So that's exciting. And then um, Shayla, oh, there you are. Shayla started business in April and uh, it has <laughs> not lost any money. Um, so huge shout out to you. Thanks. So okay, like I'm I told Emily in my group, I just want to like, that's not a huge brag. The first month I only made $80. So but <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's a profit. Yeah. Um, so thanks. I'm sorry that we, um, can't hear from everybody, but let's move on to our next discussion question and we'll split into groups. This question is, what are some things you need help with? Okay, so are you listening? People who need taglines, here you go. How can the roundtable attendees help each other? And so Zoe's uh, thing that she was asking for was, or her example, she would love to have a tax or CPA person host a class or seminar. She has many specific questions and doesn't feel tax is a very um, clear image to her ever since she started her own business. Like she says, like, I don't understand how Amazon doesn't pay a penny in taxes while I'm always dreading to see how much I have to pay. <laughs> I need someone to tell me all the programs that I'm sure I could partake in, I think. Um, so yeah, what are some things that you need help with and how can we help each other? Um, and so we'll split into groups and we'll come back here at 8.30 and then um, we'll kind of report back. So thanks everybody. <laughs> I'm worried that I might have skipped a group because I just got invited to group four. So I'm wondering, were there more groups last time that I didn't ask to report? Sorry about that. I can't that. tell you. I was group one last time. Okay. All right. Cool. So hello. So Kristen, do you want to, do you have any things that you want to say? Ah, uh, yeah. You, you could tell I was just ready. <laughs> so, um, one of the things the foundation uh, had done in the past is really relied on events for fundraising. And um, we can't do that. And we realize, you know, that it's not, um, you know, it, 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 we may come back to that, but it's not coming back anytime soon. And so, you know, we are really in need of help with taking our messaging and our storytelling into a different venue. So um, having a more, you um, uh, email and digital marketing driven fundraising campaign um, that helps to, you know, identify people who actually want to be in a relationship with us. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so we have a lot of work to do there. Um, and we're starting with migrating to a new database. So like all of the setup has to be done. And there's a lot. So if we have people who are really good at, um, developing those kind of digital strategies, um, we have some work to do in that space. Well, I have a magazine. <laughs> we, we both <laughs> know Tony Joseph. He's like, you two connect, will you? I said, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm on it. Yes. Tony. <laughs> well, this is good, good inspiration. Um, here, you put in the same group, that worked out well. Yeah, nice. Um, Brianna, how, did you get to hear the question? I did. I awesome. just ran quick to get water when I hit the join the breakout room. Yes. Um, so as kind of Jennifer was saying in the past one, of course, nonprofits, they aren't booking events or anything like that. They need to focus on other things. Um, so of course, although not profitable on their end, they are on our end. So it's kind of like, okay, how can we make up that revenue? Um, of course, it's not just nonprofits, but other companies are really watching the dime. And this is obviously easier to connect with others instead of renting a meeting room. 
um, and getting together. So um, essentially just looking for business, um, corporate events really seem to be the ones that are coming back the quickest. Um, getting creative, as kind of we told you, Kristen heard a little bit of our creativity in the last one, um, where yes, a organization can't have a holiday party in person, but you still want to celebrate. You survive the year. You want to treat mm -hmm. them. Um, so for one, we had a, the city of Rochester, actually, we hired a comedian. They came into our ballroom and then we projected that and zoomed it out to a hundred plus people. Um, and that was kind of their excitement. Um, we also did like um, events in a box. So you could order something and then send it out, whether it be cookies or an art project or so we connected with Canvas and Chardonnay. So just kind of creative ways to get out there and let you know, yes, you can't meet in person. Yes, you have a restricted budget, but we can still find ways for you to come together. That's an awesome idea. I love that. Mm -hmm. Brianna, will you remind me who you're with again? Uh, Avra Hospitality. So that would okay. be the Hilton Hotels, the new Hilton, uh, the double tree in the Hilton Garden Inn. So gotcha. right in the line. Yeah, I need to figure out how to like, there's, I know there's a way to like edit the name to like get more, like add your business to it, but I can't so. <laughs> Yeah, like Kristen, you have yours. Yeah. You have your, I thought I used to have Rochester Women Magazine on mine. It just well, I know that like the first virtual round table I went to, I was able to like add that in and I don't know where it is anymore. Oh, it's in the dot, dot, dots. So if you look next to your screen. Yep. Like the more. There's a little dot, dot, dot. And at the very bottom, it's rename. Oh. So for, for most of the last school year, mine had each of my kids' names on it so that whatever Zoom they were showing up for, uh, <laughs> for school, <laughs> they, had, they, they, were, they were named appropriately. So yeah, <laughs> um, I had to figure that out when, when we started sharing a Zoom account. Um, <laughs> Anyway, we, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you, Brianna, I, I, I understand you're feeling it. And I know a lot of um, places are feeling it too. Um, there is, you know, I don't, I know that particularly when nonprofits are, are under the pinch, uh, event fundraising, you know, always has so much risk to it uh, that it's very hard for people to do that. But that expertise that you've got, um, you know, if there is a smaller, um, uh, you know, a, a smaller um, investment for you and them, you know, we do not have the kind of creativity and expertise that you, that you do have. And I know I talked to a lot of, I, I had some very, when we were planning our virtual event that we had in um, March, uh, I had a lot of candid conversations with donors that were like, just don't do it badly. You know, it's really, hard to sit through an hour long, uh, you know, where the lighting is terrible and you, you can't, you know, and, but um, we, you know, it's hard to invest those kind of resources when, uh, you know, when you're a tiny nonprofit. And so um, we, we used our, our CTC studio in-house, but there was a lot that we did not know how to do. And so I just want to say um, there, there's still a pretty significant need from the nonprofit sector, but the risk, the risk reward for events right now is hard because, you know, you put a, a year's worth of effort into something and 30 people show up. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know so I so, um, attended a couple of the virtual galas just to see, hey, what are they doing? Is there a way we can help? And there was one I just, like, broke my heart. They definitely put all this work in and then at the end it was I don't even think they raised two thousand dollars, and it oh. was like, like, so, so I feel yeah. Like. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be. I have. I had an idea. If you want, if you want to take it. So um, we used to do a murder mystery uh, fundraiser when I worked at Elder Network, and we partnered with the amazing Absolute Theater, um, and so uh, and and it was a great thing. Um, and they have incredible actors and um, they write the script every year. Um, but like, we, we just kind of thought, well, I don't think we can pull it off, you know? Um, 
because we used to do it at the Plumber House. But but uh, we were like, I think people would go for that, that kind of murder mystery thing where there's some participation required. You know, you question the actors, that sort of thing. Um, and I know that a bunch of theater groups are are struggling with the same thing that we are, which is, you know, they can't get people to watch it on Zoom. It's not the same experience. So just a little nugget. I wanted to do that, but I just had to put it in the too hard basket. Um, so some, some, some murder mystery thing, I think, would go over really well. Which was theater did you use for that? Uh, we used to use Absolute Theater. So I've done a couple shows with Absolute. Um, and Susie is the one who writes them and she's just amazing. She's one of the founders of that group and she can just like write something like nothing. <laughs> it's really and they awesome. are, you know, so, and they are hilarious. They, um, you know, they like everything is, uh, think melodrama, like super campy um, stuff. So it's pretty accessible to everybody. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about, um, uh, <laughs> you know, about some kid walking through the background and seeing a bloody murder. It's all, it's all really, it's all really accessible. But, you know, I was thinking we, we, we wanted to make that happen. And, and um, it just, you know, there's, there's so much resource that goes into it. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, that was my, that was, I think that there are other theater groups and stuff that perhaps your expertise might help because they're trying to create that theater experience and they don't necessarily have the event aspect to it. But that's, you know, there are other people who are closer to the theater scene than me. Um, I just finished a year term at the Civic Theater um, uh, on the board, and we are having our fundraiser tomorrow, our 70th birthday party slash fundraiser. And um, we were a little bit stuck now with the Civic Center because we are under the it's this new one roof thing. I don't know if you've heard about that, Brianna. But, so we're like stuck with spectra, with food and, you know, all that stuff. So it's kind of a, a little bit of a bummer, but mm -hmm. yeah. But if we're not in the civic center, we can do other things. <laughs> so Way around it. Partner with you on something. <laughs> Okay, Shayla, how about you? What do you need help with? I think, well, and again, it's just coming up with like new marketing tactics. Cause like, you know, health fairs aren't going on right now. Um, not that I'd ever even really want a booth at a health fair anyways, cause that's just not my style. <laughs> um, and then like, I know like some chiropractors do like classes per se, but at the same time, like, I don't know like what patients want what the public wants like if yeah. I personally would not want to go sit in a class and just have one some help like you know pretty much like pitch like oh this is why you need this right um but like so crazy enough I've gotten so many patients from Instagram yeah. like <laughs> it but so I'm like okay like so between Instagram and internal referrals that's how I've been growing which hey it works and then like it helps that like I moved I grew up in Rochester, so like knowing people here has helped too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just kind of figure out like the next, I don't know, I don't want to just keep relying on these things for marketing. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you already know this, Shayla, but the Rochester Moms um, blog is really, really, um, there's a lot of uh, connections there. Um, and they often like focus on health or they'll do like a focus uh, theme. Um, if you haven't connected with those guys, they've got a pretty good local following. Obviously Emily here also, <laughs> but you know, like I think that there's a, a strong, I want to say there's a strong mom presence in this yeah. community. Well, yeah. Shayla, who's kind of your target market? So, and that's kind of the thing too, that I'm trying to like, when I got into this, like it was like, oh yeah, like moms with kids yeah um mm -hmm. and then like well like I definitely want that to be my target market and like I feel like it'll be easier for that to be my target market when I have my own kids like right now mm -hmm. like I got married last year we're holding off on trying to have kids until after this summer because we're each in three weddings it's crazy mm -hmm. so I'm like okay like do I keep targeting like moms with kids or like pregnant moms I love pregnant moms I think those are my favorite to work on um but like, is that, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is that not hypocritical, but like, is that weird to be like targeting? Oh. 
them if I'm not them? No. Okay. I don't think so. I, would I say mean, like, you're, you're a professional and you know how to give that care. I mean, yeah. And then like, I know it's like, you can't market to everybody, but I also like, don't want to like turn, like, I don't want people to think that like, oh, I can only like, come to you if I have a kid or if I'm pregnant. It's like, no, like you can come to me. Like, totally. Yeah. So it seems like Rochester Moms Blog would be a really good spot for you then. But if you're also, if you're getting people from Instagram, like in my mind, like I don't do Instagram because I feel too old. I followed you on Instagram even. But... I know. Okay. So I have somebody who does the Rochester Women Instagram and oh, people are like, yeah. oh, I saw this on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <You're> like, mm, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, but like, if that's how you're getting, and so, you know, so you have the capability of serving women who are pregnant and moms mm -hmm. um, and the expertise, but you also are, you know, who you are in a certain demographic. And so yeah. probably just, but that nat the nature of that is that you might attract people who are like you also. So mm -hmm. and Instagram mm -hmm. seems like a really good place to do that. To be yeah, no, I like that mindset. Mm -hmm. Or imposter, that's what I was looking for before, not hypocrite. Imposter, yeah. Like imposter syndrome, but yeah, no, I really like that mindset. I'll just put a little plug out for a like product or service that I am trying to sell to people, and that is um, sponsored content on our website. Um, and so that's a chance for you to write a, an article once a month um, about a topic that is important to you or that you think might pull people in. Um, so right now I have a financial advisor who's doing it. So if you go to the website under our education department, she has um, she's posted three articles there. And that's a hundred dollars a month. Okay, so let's just pull it up on my phone. Okay, cool. So that's like a lower investment compared yeah. to like what our print rates are because print rates are really expensive but I think it's almost better because it's a chance for you to really like show that you're an expert in your field yeah. so to look into that because yeah like that's the thing too with like obviously as a new business you don't want to spend like too much on stuff like while you're right. still growing so mm -hmm. I like that mm -hmm. Okay, so I just want to tell you what I need help with. Um, yeah. I need connections to people at bigger businesses in their marketing departments, like warm connections, <laughs> because I am I'm really finding that the print magazine is, I think, like the it is expensive. Like it's a big investment of money, um, and so like I. I think that there are there is kind of like a profile of a business who might be more inclined to do that, but it is so hard to like get your foot in the door. And I'm not like a trained salesperson, so I just feel like a total like noob. And I mean, even like I don't know if anybody knows anybody at Haley Comfort Systems, but I feel like they're kind of a local place. But when I called them, and I don't know anybody in the marketing department. And I said, could I speak to somebody in the marketing department? They flat out said like, do you have a name? And I said, no. And they're like, okay, well we don't forward, you know? And I was like, man, that's, that kind of sucks. Cause like I'm a local business, like, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, so that's, it's hard for me. That was also rude, but. I might be able to get you a name from there. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I agree, Emily. I think there is a, um, uh, you, you, this is, this is such funny because it's a big town, but it's still a lot of personal connections are the thing. And, you know, that's, that's why things like that, what the chamber does is, is so important. Um, uh, because, you know, and, and there are, and, you know, meeting those people who are just natural connectors yeah. uh, are, are so good like that, but yeah. Um, I know that right now, uh, especially then you get people who are kind of, um, you know, you know, people who are working from home as well as, you know, like, it's just, it's, it's like extra level hard yeah. um, if you don't have a door open yeah. um, to, to, to connect, kind of connect there. So and I'm people's like, marketing like... budgets are slashed too. Sorry, Shayla. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, I was, oh crap, now we're 
getting cut. Um, like, where do you like envision? Like, where do you want to get into? Like, so Haley's like. Yeah, so I think Haley would be really good. Think Bank, I would love to get in, and Mayo, I'd love to get in. Yeah. Um, those are kind of three big places that I think would be good advertisers and good partners. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Have you connected with OMC? Yeah, I have a really good connection at OMC. Oh, so that, they have been such a huge supporter of the magazine, which is so awesome. I'm so grateful for yeah. for them. They, they 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 are in that buy local space. They they yeah. they, they want to do it. So that's a good spot. Yeah, thanks. I'll have a think and see if okay. I can come up with. Thank oh. you. Thanks. All right. <laughs> um, Emily, both my parents are. Uh, realtors at Colo Banker Burnett and like my mom is so cute because she'll like see like a new issue of magazine she's like oh. yeah Donna and I just exchanged a connection that I don't think she realized or I realized so that was really cool yeah that's awesome yeah okay Jenny weren't here at the very beginning, but I was saying that I was Zooming from home and I lead Bible study every Wednesday night and it's a hybrid. So I just used my church Zoom to get in this morning. <laughs> cool. Well, that was really fun. Shayla, you and I will have to connect separately because you were in the middle of telling a super awesome story. <laughs> um, all right. Does anybody want to report back on their group? Just super briefly. Sorry. I'll try to be quick. So um, we, we talked about we tried to give Paulette some ideas for a, I can't think of the word, like a slogan type of thing. Um, and then we talked about how hard it is to find people to fill open positions these days. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then a, a couple, a couple people had an idea of like, well, maybe there could be some kind of online, I don't know, database of like, jobs like, I don't know, maybe less than 15 hours a week or something for people who are sort of mostly or semi-retired, but just want to work a little bit. Um, and then uh, Healing Rhythms needs your help because we have a partnership with DAV, Disabled American Veterans. And uh, if you know any veterans who would benefit from, in Minnesota, who would benefit from music therapy or their family members would benefit from music therapy, or maybe they just want to learn to play guitar or piano or something. DAV will pay for up to five music therapy sessions for any veteran for any reason. So let us, yeah, let us know or have the veteran go to our website or get in touch with us and um, we'd be happy to serve our veterans. Thank you. That's awesome. Anybody else want to share? I just want to say real quick, um, in our group, Gwen really educated us in, uh, when it comes to um, electricity and electricity use, you know, just in conversation, it really was eye-opening, um, our conversation. So I would actually recommend everybody chat with Gwen about it because, you know, we, we, we need to be in the know. Um, and the more that we women, I mean, we, we're the ones that pay the bills, right? The more we pay attention to you know, our energy usage, the better we can actually, um, the more we can kind of uh, take a look as a community, as a country uh, on our energy usage and, you know, maybe make some changes that, you know, that we need to make, whatever those may be. Uh, so I was really, uh, really impressed and, and interested in what Gwen had to say. Awesome. Thank you. Kristen. I just wanted to reaffirm a, a real common theme we had in our discussions was the importance of having uh, connections with real people. Um, particularly, a lot of us had marketing goals, um, and that the this and I just wanted to score how important this is um, because a lot of what we needed to do was to just see more people, and, you know, and have real conversations. So, thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right, maybe one more really brief one. I just wanted to thank people in my group for listening to me for the majority of the time. I really took a lot of time. And thank you, Tanya, for playing the teacher role. I really appreciate that. 
That's awesome. All right, thank you. Let's move on to our third question and split into groups. And this we're gonna go until 8.55 and then we'll have just, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 8.55. Um, and then we'll have just a super brief time to um, discuss that. So uh, the group discussion question is, what's something you slash your business want to do before the end of the summer? And how can we celebrate together? And then um, Zoe's example was, I'm getting married on the 25th in Paris. I'm looking forward to enjoying and relaxing this August. So let's see if anybody beats that for um, amazing things happening in August. Um, okay, so Amelia, thanks for putting the question um, in the chat. And let's break into groups and we'll come back at 8.55. Thank you. This is awesome. Cool. Great to see you all and connect more individually with you. So Heidi, can I start with you because you're the first person who shows up on my screen? Yes. <laughs> um, before the end of the summer, I have got a sales goal that I'm trying to hit that I've got a monthly goal that I need to hit. So I'm really in alignment with doing that. Also, um, connecting with like-minded people. I am in the business of putting people together that really um, can help each other be successful and and uh, make their business flourish. And so I'm really looking forward to making some connections. Uh, and I feel like a place to start really is, is this group right now. So I'm really excited to be part of this group and see everything that it has to offer. So thank you for welcoming me and, and allowing me to be part of today. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. We're so happy to have you. Do you have anything that you are going to be celebrating? <laughs> I have my birthday that's right around the corner in September oh. and my dog's second birthday. So I guess I got two things celebrating. Wow. <laughs> yes. Well, happy birthday to both of you. Put them up here for just a second. Oh, Good morning, everybody. Hi there, buddy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday. That's Thank super you. exciting. Fun. Tanya, how about you? Yes. Heidi, you need to put your, your information in the chat so people yeah. can connect with you and maybe get to know more about what you do and everything. Yeah, that'd be yes. awesome. Thank um, you. Something that I'm trying to do, I, I'm kind of been doing it this last week because I start school on Monday with my full-time job and Rodan and Fields is kind of my side gig that I do in between when I can. Um, but it's been networking, 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 getting to as many events as I can, meeting as many people as I can, just getting my name out there, uh, finding the people who are looking, looking for something to switch up with their skincare or, you know, who do they know that I could maybe assist or connect with. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And are, do you have anything that you'll you'll be celebrating? Uh, I don't know if I'm celebrating anything. My my celebrations are every time I somebody has success with their skincare. It's like yes, I told you I would do this. That's why I do what I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you a teacher too? Is that right? I am. I'm I'm a digital arts teacher at Mayo High School. Oh, cool! That's super awesome. <laughs> Right. Very so nice. I get to teach like uh, drawing on the computer, animation, video production. I get to do just dabble in all of it. I love it. That's great. Very cool. So are you hoping for like a regular school year? That would be a celebration. Oh dear God, it? please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping this uh, online school is really, really going to help us get that. Um, yeah. You know, so if the kids want to be, it just, Give me either, you know, as a digital teacher, I don't mind the virtual. I, right. I can do what I need to virtually. I, give me virtual, give me in person. Please don't give me both. Like I had to do hybrid. It was a nightmare. It, I couldn't do my job well. It was so hard to do my job well because the kids just didn't show up when they were online. Right. I had so many kids that, you know, they would log in. But when I tried talking to them, they weren't there. Mm -hmm. So. And they just, oh, I overslept, so I'm going to hop on online today instead of just coming in person. It made them lazy, is what it did. Yeah, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> well, fingers <laughs> crossed. I have two high schoolers. Right. I have a junior and freshman at, at um, Century. So I 
really want them to have oh. a normal year. Leave the house, my, my, be gone for all day. <laughs> my, my daughter's a junior at Century as well. Oh, fun. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully for those seniors too, they'll yeah. be able to enjoy this year. So Beth, how about you? Oh boy, um, as far as, you know, what my um, goal and everything for coming up here is just like um, Heidi, I have quotas and everything that I wanna meet and I've got some goals, but the biggest thing is um, with Rochester, it, we're starting now. So I work all of entire Southern Minnesota, but we kind of block it into areas and such. So we're supposed to have Rochester done by December. And my goal is to have it done by Thanksgiving. So mm. I'm really pushing myself to, to get things taken care of and personally really positioning myself so that I can have a win every single day. And nice. um, so that at the end of the week, I can feel confident about moving on to the next week. But personally, um, of course, it's the 20th anniversary of 9-11 coming up. And yeah. I have um, gone online and I'm going to be doing the virtual. So I am not a runner. Okay, first, let's put that right out there. And I had a herniated L5 and I couldn't even walk probably about 12 years ago. I didn't have surgery. My surgeon instead gave me some other options, which I am thankful for because of course, then I had young kids and I was like, I'm gonna be paralyzed if I have surgery and all that scary stuff. But with that, I have, um, it was pool that I had to go in the pool with like a noodle around my waist, just in case you're wondering, but, um, but now I do run and I do other things. So I'm running in the Med City Marathon on 9-11, but I'm only running the 5K. Don't get excited here, people. But I'm excited about doing even a 5K. And then, again, that's on 9-11, but then this virtual one is to run 9.11 miles in honor of 9-11. Um, but your proceeds go towards helping the people of New York that, have survived, but still have a lot of disabilities and things going on. So I'm actually really going to run a 5K, but I'm also going to run, I guess it's even a little more than a 6K because it's 9.11 miles. So wish me luck for that, but Good for you. I'm excited for. Way to go. Yeah. Beth, what is it that you do? I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, so I offer software to businesses to help them run their business more effectively. It's everything from um, online estimates, invoices, taking payments, putting their social media on where they can push out to one platform, but they can push it out to Google My Business, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. It's a it's a list like that's this long, but it's the coolest it's the coolest thing ever that has saved so many businesses over this past year. So I'm trying to remember what the verbiage was that you used. I think you said like uh, wrap up or or something Rochester um do you guys remember what what she said like you're trying to finish up Rochester by Thanksgiving oh, oh yeah and I said wrap it up um yeah. so tell, just, tell us what that means okay so be, beside the um the software that our company offers um and that's really stop I guess that's okay huh <laughs> <laughs> so beside the fact that we offer this software and that is really the mainstay of our business we were formerly dex so the telephone directory so um believe it or not the rochester phone book is still really strongly used by 45 and older um it seems like are you kidding me no it doesn't but so i know and the demographics are are just astounding like roofers you know if, if it does hail tonight you can imagine that phone book's going to be opened and people are going to be searching. You're thinking, are you, you've got to be kidding me, but people put track lines in now. And so we actually have the proof of, you know, who's calling and you can record the call so you can actually hear the validity of it. And it's, it's just still astounding the work that most people are like, don't tell anybody about it. It's my secret because there's fewer businesses that are in it now, but those that are in it are, are a gold mine. So, okay. anyway, so the the print phone book is is coming due the end of December because it hits the street February first. Okay. So that's what I meant by wrapping that part of it up. 
Oh, gotcha. Okay. Because I have probably about 220 Rochester accounts. I mean, there's other reps, of course, that handle everything. But so I have a lot of businesses already that I meet with all the time. Right. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Always looking for new ones. And yeah. so Heidi, if you guys need anything, <laughs> I don't know, up in Edina, you guys probably already are, but I can always help Edina, Winona. That's my entire market area. So awesome. that's what that was though, Emily. Sorry. I had a question about the Rochester Women's Magazine. Is that um, online as well as print? Yep, it is. Yeah. So our web address is rochesterwomenmagazine.org. Oh my gosh, I had to think about that. <laughs> what is it? Or is it rwmagazine.com? Hold on. I got to check. <laughs> Can you put it in the chat or no? Yes, I totally will. Awesome. You could just Google Rochester Women Magazine too. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just like comes up like automatically for me when I put it in my search bar, right? I seriously have to double check. That's terrible. It's rwmagazine.com. Good job, Emily. Speaking of phone books and remembering things that just pop up for us, you know, like I could tell you every phone number of all my best friends as a kid growing up, but I can't tell you my mom's current phone number. <laughs> crazy? Isn't it what we can retain? Yes. Right. It's so weird. I used to like totally pride myself on that, Tanya. I'd be like, I'm the best number rememberer ever. And now <laughs> nothing. Nothing. You ask no. me any business and I'll tell you their number. I know it's funny, but you know what? It was Benjamin Franklin that said way back in the day, why you have so many things to remember and your brain can handle so much and it has the capability to continue to grow, but don't keep the silly things in your brain. There's a phone book for that. Use <laughs> your brain for the, remember, isn't that funny? That's your tagline. Get right it out there. of your brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can, I can throw that file away. It doesn't work yeah. that way. Yes. Okay, speaking of that, I'm sorry, this is kind of a tangent, but I just have to tell you how excited I am about this. Um, I have a business coach and she, we talk a lot about like how our minds like just chatter and how like we tell ourselves all these crazy things. And so she was, she recommended this book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And it's amazing. So this is a journal that goes along with the book. Um, I've actually been, I actually found somebody who reads the book on a podcast. And so I'm listening to it. And then, well, I've done one entry in the journal so far, but it's really awesome because it like, you guys probably already know this, but for me, it's like a huge, like, aha thing. Like you're, we are not our thoughts and like, you can step away from your thoughts and you can tell your thoughts to like, go take a hike. And I don't know, for me, it's really a huge thing lately. So. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah. That does sound like a great book. Yeah. So what did, what did you struggle with that you all of a sudden had that aha moment I have so much negative self-talk in my head like I tell my friends you guys I would never tell you guys the things that I tell myself you know like you can't do this you you know you're dumb I mean all these things like that I'm like this is crazy why why is why does my brain do that I don't know yeah. and so now I'm like be quiet you can't not alone a lot of live here happens. yeah Yes. Yeah. And I found Emily, I'm actually, I'm reading a couple of books right now. Go Giver is one of them that I have got. That's fantastic. But it talks about if we've got 60,000 thoughts that are going through our head all of the time and some of them negative, some of them positive, some of them indifferent, right? We can't control all those thoughts, but the thing that we can be in control of is when we fart, start feeling yuck about something, we can stop and we can say, I'm going to list five things that I'm grateful for right now and get myself back on track, right? Yes. I'm going to do an act that's out of love right now to get out of that negative emotion that's down here and get up in this positive emotion. Because the more we live up here, the more we attract to ourselves up there. The yes. more we're down here with the shame, guilt, resentment, frustration, anger, the yes. more we attract that. So I've right. just found that the thoughts going through like this, if I can say when I'm starting to get there, my legs work. I've got a car that works. Yeah. I get to work with my brother. I've got, you know, just a quick stock of five things that I'm grateful for. And at any point, there's going to be five things that you can come up with that you're grateful for. Yes. You know, I love that. that quick, like reset, you know, 
because you deserve to have positive thoughts in your head. I mean, right. that's what we're destined for. We're not supposed to have the universe doesn't have judgment and negativity in that's it. That's right. It's that's our own right. personal part that does it, but we can change it. And yeah. it's healthy that you talk about it. That's the other thing is that right. there's no shame in talking about it. Talking about it sets us free from it. Yes. Right? Yeah. I'm all be forever grateful for people like Brene Brown. I'm not like a huge follower of her, but you know, I've listened to some podcasts that she has and you know, she is so honest about everything. And I just love that. And then, um, oh, who's the woman who's married to Abby Wambach? Um, Glennon Doyle also, like both of those women, like amazing, strong women. And they just put it all out there. Like, this is what I, my life is. Like, it sometimes sucks, you know? I, I read a book, uh, I loved it. It's called Get Over Your Damn Self uh, yeah. by Romy, by Romy Newstead. Uh, okay. It, it's, kind of a network marketing type focus very easy read but she she's in Rodan and Fields also but she is amazing she is a former lawyer that just she's a straight shooter she will tell you how it is but basically she her big thing is don't think for other people think for yourself and don't don't assume oh because they've got this great job they may not be interested in doing this or just get over your damn self right Share the information, think for yourself, think, let them think for themselves. You know, yes. what you have is a gift kind of deal. So and awesome. it's just amazing to kind of up with you in your work. And so I, every time I start thinking that of like, oh, I don't know, somebody, because I'm, I'm not a salesy person. I'm a teacher. I'm a sharer, you know, yeah. but I, Tanya, get over your damn self. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys ever feel like, when you go to the chamber events, like either the morning espresso or the after hours that you, you feel like, oh, I don't want to just go jump in and say hi to someone. And, you know, and you just have that kind of like, and you, that just get over your damn inner thoughts. Just go right. do it. Everybody is there. Everybody's for the there for the reason. same reason. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that is, I got to get that book. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. This is really a good breakout session, you guys, if nothing else for our mental Right. feel good go friday weekend <laughs> i know i'm thinking like maybe we should do a full round table sometime on something like this like like one thing that i think encapsulates it for me a lot is the imposter syndrome you know like you know what what if people find out that i don't know anything about advertising you know <laughs> then then my career is sunk It'll be so embarrassing, you know. I think it could be incredibly beneficial to do it because I think that no matter what industry we're in, we all have got some of that negative talk that takes place. And like I said, again, just opening up and sharing about it frees yourself from it. And then to hear from, like I look at you, Emily, and I'm like, I saw your picture on the magazine. I'm like, she's got this stuff all together. Look at her. She's all professional. She's got the whole thing, right? I so, do. I do. You do. I really do. You do. See the what like things on my wall back there? Those are unhung pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there for years. I haven't decided what's supposed to be there yet. It hasn't right. manifested itself yet. What's supposed to be there? It's all good. That's right. I think that there's, I think a dialogue about this in a big group or having a lot of people talk about it, at least for mm -hmm. me personally, be really beneficial. Okay, I love it. That's actually something that I've been thinking that I would like to pursue more with the magazine because I feel like if there is one thing that a lot of women have in common, I think it's that. It's the negative self-talk. It's the like mental load that we carry around all the time. Like, so yeah. We well, and, and like for me, being in direct sales, how many people are like anti MLM? And I'm like, it's not like that. You know, what I do is no different than buying the Dairy Queen name or buying the Burger King name. It's just, I don't have to pay nearly as much as they do. And I don't have a physical brick and mortar building. But so many people don't see that. I'm like, you don't see the side where it's helping me pay for my daughter's gymnastics. It's helping me take a mother daughter trip. Um, it, 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 it's helping me. And yeah. the money I make on somebody else is so minimal compared to the work that I have to put in to get my own clients. You know, yeah. and people don't see that. They're like, oh, MLM, no, no. Yeah. I was in charge of, I was in charge of women's round table with Zoe at one point in time. And this has been the best one that I've seen to date. You made it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Donna, what happened to you? You're in like a totally different outfit right now. Oh, so I live in a house that was built in the 20s. Okay. We have a boiler and radiators. Okay. I hate air conditioning. And yeah. And loves it. So I'm sitting and I close the curtains because I, I have all the windows open. And as the time, you know, as the temperature increased, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really hot. And then I had to plug my computer in. So you changed, you changed. The that is really funny. That's so funny. All right, you guys, we don't have very much time left. Um, so I just want to remind you to put your contact information in the chat um, as soon as you can so that people can get it. And then is somebody, does somebody capture that? Sherry? Maybe Sherry, you can message us and let us know. I can, she says, thank you. Sherry said her my, mic is not working. Um, okay, so so I just wanna say right now, thank you so much to everybody for coming and thank you for the people who are joining for the first time. I know that first meeting is sometimes a little bit intimidating because it feels like everybody kind of knows each other. Um, and to some extent that's true, but I think as um, somebody mentioned in our last session, Tanya, maybe we're all here for the same reason to meet people. Um, and so that's great. And so I hope that maybe we can meet each other in real life, IRL at some event sometime soon. Um, I think I already said this, but a quick plug for Rochester Women Magazine. We're doing our release event on September 3rd at 125 Live from 10 to noon. Um, and so I'll be there. So show up and I'll say hi to you. Donna, were you going to say yeah. something? Amelia, plug your event Tuesday, August 24th at the old reading center. It's the new healing rhythms. But go ahead, Amelia. You I put it in the chat, okay. I think. <laughs> but yeah, Tuesday, August 24th, 4.30 to 6 p.m. Okay, there um, it is. Yeah. Right on 5th Street next to NUPA. Awesome. Um, we would love to have you and to show off our beautiful new space. That is awesome. Congratulations. That's very exciting. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to plug? Uh, one hailstorms are on the way in the uh, Rochester area. If your house gets hit by hail and you want a free inspection, uh, give me a jingle. If, if we don't see hail, we'll tell you so. If we do, we'll walk you through the next steps. Thank you. Thanks, Heidi. Mm. Jennifer, are you going to say something? Go ahead. No, I, just I just want to put a I just want to put a plug in for uh, teachers and kids starting and college kids too starting school and innovate, collaborate, and design design thinking and mapping um, uh, for the whole entrepreneurship is um, I just I give you all the support and championship uh, that you need and families to get your kids off and for daycare, housing, transportation, healthcare. Uh, to awesome. make this sustainable Thanks, community. Thank you. That's awesome. Jennifer, what were you going to say? I One of the big things this year that we're focusing on in particular, we do in all of our work anyway, but we're, we're um, kicking off our campaign with a 21-day equity challenge. Nine o'clock. So you can use this link in the chat to go look at, look at it, um, but there's 21 days of activities it only takes you 15 minutes a day to participate. Um, and then we're actually hosting conversations on Zoom every other week nice. um, about what you learned. So we're really excited. It, it's been a heavy lift to try to get this going, but we're really excited. It, it actually doesn't, uh, the 21 days starts like October 2nd. So you can start signing up for it to get those emails and participate. So just wanna plug that. Thanks. Tanya? Um, yeah, I just wanted to, if anybody wants to continue this sort of thing and having chats, I have been having poolside chats in my backyard. Um, I've been doing it in the morning, but now uh, I'm having to switch to afternoon since as a teacher, I have to go to school. So, which is a good thing. I get to go to school, I guess now. <laughs> um, so as long as the weather is permitting, I am continuing this on Thursdays at 5.30. So if anybody wants to join, just shoot me a message. I'll give you the address. It's, Come beautiful. Join us. it's a beautiful setting, wonderful people, good coffee in the morning. And I <laughs> hesitate to say, but the macarons. The macarons. Oh, my daughter makes macarons. So yes, I've been uh -huh. having macarons available. Wow, nice. <laughs> Donna, were you going to say something else? 
Uh, no, I was going to plug Tanya's Thursday nights. Those okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, anything else super quick? Otherwise, we should probably get on with our day. Molly, oh, did you have your yes, hand up? Yes, sorry, just I Hi, know Molly. technology very well. Hi, sorry, I joined a little late. So on Wednesdays, uh, next Wednesday at, at Roy Watson um, Sports Complex from uh, 6 to 8, they're going to have free music. And it's an amazing band. You can uh, check that out. But anyway, it's free music uh, this Wednesday. So yay. Thanks, Molly. All right, well, I hate to say goodbye. Jennifer, you unmuted yourself. No, oh, I was, I just put in there another incentive that I never talked about, which is really, really, really cool is that you have a chance to win a two year lease uh, on a car for just giving a dollar to United Way. Wow, that's pretty cool. Awesome. I, I just put the link in there too. Awesome. Thanks you guys. So we'll see you in a link. month or so, okay? Everybody have a great like, rest. Get emailed to us. Oh yeah. So what Sherry, how does that work? I don't know if she emails it out. I think they send an email. Really information. I think they send the email recording. And so maybe with that, she sends the chat. Does anybody else know for sure? Yeah, it's, yeah, I understand. From my experience, it's been an email with all of this captured. Cool. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>